What made you get up that morning and admit to cheating and having an affair? Uh, it wasn't an affair, I'll tell you that much. But I woke up one morning and, you know, I'd made a big mistake years previous. Um, and something in me made me want to tell my partner. Um, and there's a lot in the book that details what I went through from being honest. Um, and now nearly a year on, well, just over a year on from that, I can sit there and say it was the best decision I ever made. So um, now I know why I woke up that morning. It was a subconscious that was telling me, do this, do this, do this. And it was playing on my mind really, really bad. Um, and I thought I was wrong. I thought I'd done the worst thing I could have ever done. I, I've ruined my life. I've done all of this. What are you doing? And actually, it, it restarted, restarted my life. Um, and. I went very bad, as you read in the book, I, I had a very severe mental health breakdown. I had to have five months off work and I don't have a day off work. So for me, that was quite a big deal. Um, but actually what made me get better was just the realisation and the knowledge that I'd learned along the way yeah. of uh, the two different versions of that chapter and what it's amalgamated to now. <laughs> <laughs> like, like we, we know the reaction you got when, when, you, when you came out with this confession. Yeah. What reaction were you hoping for? Um, I think that's a, a difficult question. Like, I mean, I thought after sort of that, all those years of marriage that a conversation yeah. would happen. And without going too deep, I thought maybe some understanding could have gone on, um, which sounds crazy yeah. because it's like, well, you've done wrong, you've done wrong. Yeah, I know I've done wrong, but everyone has reasons for doing what they do. Um, and for me personally, I didn't expect someone just to walk away. And that's what made me spiral because it's like, this isn't right. And I knew something wasn't right. I knew something wasn't right. Um, and yeah, as the months went on, I then realized what woke me up that morning. Mm -hmm. and trust your gut and trust your intuition because it doesn't normally let me down and it hasn't this time either. How important was it for you to share the full aftermath of making that decision and breaking that news? You know, you mentioned like the full mental breakdown, yeah. feelings of suicide, mm. depression. Why was it important for you to show that full spectrum of your own mental health in the aftermath of that? Because I thought it wouldn't be fair if I didn't because it's part of the story. It's part of that 10 years. Um, do I wish I could have lived under a rock and no one knew what happened to me? Sometimes, yeah, I do. Because you then do interviews and talk to people and it will get brought up. But actually what I've learned is since the book's come out, the amount of messages that I get from people going, I've been through the same thing on either side or this or that, whether it's a relationship, work, or this or that. And how you've described what happened to you is exactly how I felt and I never knew how to say it. Mm -hmm. And I also think, you know, there's quite a stigma with guys as well, talking about mental health. Um, and I'm, and I'll say this very loosely, even though it's a very important topic, I don't want to be one of those people that jump on the mental health bandwagon for the sake of jumping on the mental health bandwagon. I'm just explaining what happened to me last year. Someone who's always in control, always knows what they're doing, has managed to go from that to that in 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden a baseball bat hit me around the face out of nowhere. And I couldn't speak, I couldn't talk, I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't do nothing. I'm six foot four, I'm a giant. And I went down to nine stones. You know, that's not yeah. right. Um, but this came out of nowhere. And it was just sort of to say that this can happen to anyone. It doesn't matter whether there's money in the bank, whether you've got this, whether you've got that. Um, and actually the result of the book has been so positive um, with people getting in touch with me and just saying that they've been through the same. And actually, the more we talk about things like that, you realise you're not mental, you're not mad, you're not crazy. You're this not happens. Yeah. yeah, it happens. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, your mum was a superhero. Oh, my God, like the biggest superhero. I mean, I put her through hell, basically. You oh, know. We, we watch you on Gogglebox. Oh, no, she puts me through hell on Gogglebox. <laughs> um, yeah, no, she was, she was ma majorly there for me. And I think in times like that, you realise who your friends are and who your family yeah. are. Um, and your family aren't necessarily blood. You know, I've got, you yep. read in there, part of this, uh, the book is, I got six of my closest to write a letter for the book inside. So you've got Claire from Steps, Ruth Langsford's in there, my mum's in there, uh, my friends, my sister-in-law. Um, 
and it's a lesson we've learned together. And actually Claire, who was in Steps, I didn't read any of the letters until the book came out because I didn't want to. I didn't write it. It's my favourite part of the book, by the way, the bit I didn't write. Um, <laughs> and reading Claire's, she mentioned about when she, my mum had arranged for her to come and visit me when I was really sick because I didn't want to see anyone. I hadn't seen anyone for months, but my mum did it without me knowing. And obviously I was upset when I saw Claire and it was nice seeing her. And then she wrote in her letter something I never knew is that she then pulled over and into a lay-by and just cried because she thought she wasn't going to see her little brother again. And reading that, even just saying it now makes me get emotional because although I'm the one going through it, you forget what effect this yep. can have on those around you. And yeah, I think that was an important part of the message as well, is to be like, you're not the only one going through it.